everyone, my name is Pixie, and this is part two of Advanced Animation Using Sprites on a Canvas. So let's get started. Drag a vertical scroll arrangement onto the screen, add a horizontal scroll arrangement inside of the vertical scroll arrangement, then place a canvas inside of the horizontal scroll arrangement. I'm going to name these containers as Prison VS, Prison HS, and Prison. Set the canvas height to 624 and the width to 816. This is the same width and height of the prison map. Add an image sprite to the canvas and call it map. Set the width and height of map to 624 and 816. Change the X and Y coordinates to 00, zero and the picture for this image sprite should be set to mapprison.png. Add five more image sprites to the canvas. It doesn't matter where you place them, we're gonna change their X and Y values in the block section. The first image sprite will be our actor, and we can set a default image for the actor. You probably want to face the actor either forward or backward. The X and Y coordinates don't matter, but the Z coordinate does. We're going to set the Z coordinates for each of these image sprites to determine the layer placement. The Z coordinate for the actor should be the highest value. We probably won't need more than four layers, so this value could be four or five, but we'll say 10 just to be safe. The next sprite will be named event poster and its picture will be event.png. Remember that event.png is just a blank 48 by 48 image that we can place on any tile. I'll set the Z index to three. The third sprite is called static flame. I'm giving it the static title to indicate that it will be an animated sprite that doesn't move. The picture will be set to flame1.png and the Z index is set to two. The fourth sprite is NPC guard. This title is probably obvious. I'm creating a sprite that the actor can talk to. I'll set the Z index to three. So this means the guard NPC is on the same layer as the event poster. The default picture will be guard1.png. The final sprite is named B underscore four by five. This will be our test sprite. B stands for blockade and four by five represents the tile coordinates. The picture for this sprite is the same image as prison four five, except that it's colored red so we can see it on the map. But in the final build, you should be using the transparent blockade images, not the red ones. It doesn't matter where you place the sprite on the canvas. Before we add anything else, click on the actor sprite and change the interval to zero and uncheck the rotate option. Sprites have their own internal clocks, but we're going to use a clock component to animate this actor. You might decide you don't like that and you want to use the sprite's internal clock and obviously it's your app, so feel free to make any changes. We're also using our own images to represent direction, so we don't need to use the built-in rotation. Next, add two clocks to the viewing window. Uncheck the timer always fires option and set the timer interval to 200 for both clocks. Keep in mind both clocks have the same properties, but we're creating two different clocks because they will do two different things. Clock one is named animate actor and clock two is animate static. Lastly, add four floating buttons to the screen. Call these up, down, left, and right. This will allow us to control our actor's movement. Each floating button size should be set to 64. Change the pictures of each button to represent their names. The picture for up should be arrow up.png and the margin bottom and margin right values for each button should be as follows. This is going to place our floating buttons in the bottom right corner of the screen in a T shape, similar to what you've probably seen in a lot of mobile RPGs. We're just making a simplified version of the control pad. You can also play around with these values if you don't like the way that they look. You might decide to add four more sprites instead of using the floating buttons. And since you'd want your control pad to be higher than your actor, then you would set the Z index for the control buttons to a higher value. Our actor is on layer 10, so your control buttons would be on layer 11 or higher. I just thought for this tutorial, it might be easier to use the floating buttons, just so we're not focusing on the controls. All right, we're done with the design portion. Let's move on to the blocks editor. Create five variables, counter actor, counter static, speed, size, and direction. The next two variables will keep track of our clock timers, so set the default for these to zero. The speed represents how quickly you want your actor to move on the canvas. I think two is a good speed. And we'll use size to represent our tile size. In this case, 48 is our tile size. I'd recommend the default direction to be F or B, so your character should face forwards or backwards. And this letter corresponds to the naming convention we used when we saved our actor images. Next, create five procedures. We're gonna start with a procedure called move sprite that has three arguments, sprite, X, and Y. 
The Any components are my absolute favorite components. We're going to use an Any image sprite dot move to for component using the sprite argument. This is the equivalent of actor dot move to, except that any component allows us to pass the component name as a variable. The X and Y value will be set to X times size and Y times size respectively. Remember, we're not using the pixel coordinates, we're using tile coordinates. So if X equals one and Y equals zero, then one times 48 equals 48 and zero times 48 equals zero. So this would place our sprite at pixel coordinate 48, zero, which is the same as tile coordinate one, zero. The next procedure is called stop actor movement. Setting the actor speed to zero will automatically stop the sprite from moving forward. Next call the move sprite procedure. The sprite argument should be actor. The X argument will round the actor's current X location divided by global size. And the Y argument will do the same, but for the actor's Y location. So what is this doing? This will force your actor back into the closest tile. The execution does look a little weird, but I'll explain it in a bit why we need to force this movement. The next procedure will change the actor's picture, which will create the movement animation. Using a join block, set the actor's picture. Remember the naming convention that we used for our actor started with the word actor and ended in .png. Each image that we saved specified a direction, either F, B, L, or R, and was followed by a number 1, 2, or 3. We created a global variable to specify direction, and the counter variable will count 1, 2, and 3 each time the actor clock ticks. Now let's initialize the blockades. As of right now, I've just added one blockade to the canvas and I'm just using the one sprite right now to make sure the collision detection works. Once we've tested the app, then we can go back and add the remaining blockades. As a result, this procedure will need to be updated. Our blockade is just a sprite on the canvas, so we call B four by five as the argument for the sprite and set its X value to four and its Y value to five. This is exactly why we named our blockade images by their coordinate. So we don't need to flip flop back and forth between Photoshop or the design view. We named this sprite and its picture based on its tile coordinate on the map. The second procedure will initialize our sprite. We could put these all in one procedure. I just wanted to keep them separate for better organization. Let's start with our actor. I want the actor to appear in the doorway. So that would be X equals eight and Y equals 11. On the prison map, there's a poster on one of the cell walls. The actor should not be able to take this poster off the wall, so we created a sprite called event poster using the event.png image. Remember that image is invisible and it's exactly 48 by 48 pixels, so it's the same size as one tile. I'm going to move that sprite into tile 811, so essentially we're creating an event that allows the actor to read this poster. Now let's move static flame into tile 98. This is just going to be an animated wall decoration and we'll move NPC guard into tile 139. Lastly, call initialize blockades and initialize sprites when the screen starts. Let's start with the animate static clock. Every time this clock ticks, we increment by one. We started with a default of zero. So as soon as this clock turns on, then counter static equals one. We'll use a join block to change the guards picture each time this clock ticks. The guard images start with the word guard and end in .png and they're numbered one through three. Use a join block again to change static flame picture each time this clock ticks. The flame images start with the word flame and end in .png and they're also numbered one through three. If the static counter equals three, which is the maximum number of pictures we're using for our animated sprites, then set static counter back to zero. So every time this clock ticks, it will count one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. The animate actor clock is going to do the same thing. Go ahead and copy and paste the if else statement and the counter increment, but change the variables from counter static to counter actor. Remember we created a procedure that changes the actor's picture. All you need to do is call that procedure in this clock. So each time the clock ticks, the actor's picture will change based on the actor counter one, two, or three. We'll change the direction the actor faces when the user presses the control buttons. So now we need to specify that direction. Use the click events for each of the floating buttons. I'm going to arrange them in a T shape, just like our control pad. In the center of these events, create a procedure named walk with two arguments called direction and heading. Set the global direction to the argument direction. Change actor heading to the argument heading and set actor speed to the global variable speed. Let's start with the up event. 
Call the walk procedure, set the direction to B and the heading to 90. When the actor is walking up on the map, we should see their backside. Remember that each sprite has a heading property based on a positive X axis. So if we're moving up, we're moving north at 90 degrees. To walk down, the actor should be facing forward, and we're now moving south at negative 90 degrees. To walk left, the actor should be facing left, and we're now moving west at 180 degrees. To walk right, the actor should be facing right, and we're now moving east at 0 degrees. We're going to finish off the block section by adding some collision events. Use the with event, and we'll call the procedure stop actor movement. So anytime the actor collides with any other sprite on the map, the actor will stop moving. We also want to do something specific if the actor collides with the guard and the poster. If you have multiple NPCs walking on the map, you might want to do something if the NPCs collide with each other, in which case you would create an if else statement that says if other equals NPC guard 2 or NPC guard 3. But the only thing moving on this map is our actor, so we don't need to use an if else statement. I've added a label above the scroll arrangements to give us some test output for this next part. Let's just do something simple and say if NPC guard dot collided with, then set the test label to say this is the guard. Grab event poster dot collided with and do the same thing. Set the test label to output this is the poster. Lastly, let's use the actor dot edge reach to determine if the actor reaches this black square at the edge of the screen. Remember that we only have one blockade sprite on the canvas, but we did create multiple blockade images. The actor starts in the doorway and can't pass any area shown in red. The only edge the actor can reach is this tile right here. We'll do something simple and say if the actor reaches edge negative one, which represents the south side of the screen, then open a new window called teleport. All I've done is create a screen called teleport. It doesn't do anything, it's a blank screen. We're just testing to make sure that when you reach the edge, something else happens other than updating the test label. So we're done, let's run the app and see what it looks like. Remember we added a horizontal scroll arrangement inside of a vertical scroll arrangement. This allows us to scroll to the left and right as well as up and down. We set the actor sprite in the doorway and there she is. We also set the flame on the wall above her and a guard over to the right side. The clocks are running and we can see the animation for each of these sprites. Let's walk over to the guard and notice our test label says this is the guard. Now let's walk over to the poster, which you can't currently see because the red blockade image is in the way, but let's walk over to where the poster is supposed to be and our test label says this is the poster. Cool. Notice also that we can't pass through this red blockade image. Each time we collide with something, the actor is forced back into the closest tile. The collided with event only tracks a one pixel edge around the image sprite. So let's say this actor hits the wall. The collided with event triggers and the actor stops moving. Then we press up and the actor moves forward. The actor will move forward and will overlap the blockade image. So the actor is no longer colliding with the blockade. The actor is on top of the blockade. So we're basically forcing the actor back into a tile so it can continue to activate the collided with event. Let's wrap this up and talk about a few more things. If you decide to download the project from the Appy Builder community, you'll notice a few changes. I've added some elements that we've covered in previous tutorials, like a banner ad. Now let's go talk to the guard and notice nothing happens when I collide with him, but if I click on him, a dialog box appears. I can press this little X button to close the dialog box. The wanted poster just has the collision detection event with its own dialog box. You'll notice there are two different types of collision events here. One that requires a click and one that doesn't. And the dialog box changes as well, one with an image, one without. I've also added the remaining collision detection blockade images, and remember these are supposed to be invisible, not colored red. The original was colored red just so we could see it on the map during testing. And it seems to be working as intended. I can't walk on walls, I can't walk on tables, perfect. You'll notice the changes in the blocks editor. The initialize blockades procedure has been updated. I've added a third procedure to the initialize screen event. These blocks have nothing to do with animation, so they're not really part of the tutorial. I just thought it would be fun to showcase some options. It's nothing fancy, just two different lists that hold names of characters and some short sentences. The set dialog procedure will change the image in the dialog box or hide the image if you don't need it. The labels will update with the selected index in the name and dialog list. Notice that the collided with event for the guard has been replaced by a touched event. And like I said, this addition isn't part of the tutorial, but it's something I thought would help you guys get some ideas flowing. There's a lot you can do, so let me know what you come up with.
Check out the Appy Builder community where you can discuss projects you're working on, stay up to date on current topics, and access tutorials created by community members. Alrighty guys and gals, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to thumbs up the video and have a great day. Bye!